day we've had so far, NFL Media Headquarters, and now joined by the best high school all around athlete I've ever seen, and he also was a heck of a player in college at Notre Dame in the NFL. Bobby Taylor joins us, Paul Catalina, David Smoke on 365 Sports. How are you doing, Bobby? Guys, how you doing? How you doing? I'm great. I wish I could be there in person with you. I'm probably about three blocks away from you, but it's good to get on the phone with you all and catch up. Last time, if you'll recall, that I saw you was down in Tampa at the Super Bowl 55. Yes, Tampa beat, obviously, Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City. You were at a a, de a dinner having lunch with some uh, tequila spikes yeah. and others. So yes, yep. are, are you in Phoenix because of the alumni of the Philadelphia Eagles? Are you here on business? Because I know you're an entrepreneur. Well, first I'm here on business because I do consulting work now for the NFL. And so we have a lot of youth activations going on. As a matter of fact, I'm with Takeo now because one of our good friends and one of my teammates in Philadelphia, Troy Vincent, him and his wife, has a nonprofit in every Super Bowl city they adopt an elementary school and so we go over there and I mean we've been there since seven this morning just mm. finished probably about 30 minutes ago all right so Troy Vincent you Brian Dawkins was was with you right um I'm, yes, sir. I'm trying to think of anybody whose post football career in that secondary hasn't gone really really well Bobby you guys you guys not only were pretty damn good you're you're pretty darn successful as well well it's a blessing I think the best part about that is the same way we pushed each other on the field, we pushed each other off the field. And when we had a brother that needed some help, just like on the field, um, we try to help them out um, off the field as well. And so it's deeper than just football for us just because we're essentially brothers. Because I played eight years together with Troy. I played eight years together with Brian Dawkins as well. And so... You know, we just try to uplift each other. We know we were blessed to, you know, play as long as we were able to play. But, you know, hopefully we still can have long and successful lives after football as well. Eagles team that uh, this year, now I know that they've got the Super Bowl in their back pocket you know, from a couple of years ago, but this is almost a completely different team. What's it like to watch yeah. a completely rebuilt team, a new team, new quarterback, almost all the way down except for some of the old Wiley veterans like Jason Kelsey, be back in this game and be maybe the best pound-for-pound -pound team talent-wise in the NFL? Yeah, I think it's just, you know, you have to take your hats off to the ownership, Jeffrey Lurie. Um, you have to take your hats off to um, Howie Roseman to be able to go out and make the type of moves that he's been able to make. Because you can think, like, even without some of the additions that we added during the season, like in Dominican Sue and some of the other defensive linemen, I mean, we still had a pretty um, talented Team. And so just to see those type of moves being made, it's as a fan, because I, I'm, I'm a fan as well, it makes you appreciate, you know, what your team is bringing to the table to try to put the best product out there on the field each and every week. Bobby, if you're on a team and you have a chance, for example, the Rams went and found a home run hitter or two as far as on either side of the ball. What Philadelphia has done, you mentioned in Dominican Sue, has now become kind of a, okay, that would be a major piece, one-year deal. If you have a chance and you're a player, whether you're a second-year guy or a ninth-year guy, do you go and do that no matter what it means a year or two from now? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you would just look at what the Rams did last year. I mean, they, they did that, and, you know, unfortunately, you know, they aren't in the playoffs this year. They're sitting at home. But I just think with this day and age of um, – Athletic, athletics and things of that nature, you, you, you have to put it out there each and every year because you never know what's going to happen in future years. And so, I mean, I like the mentality, but the good thing about what the Eagles, I think, have done, even outside of after this season, they still should have a lot of those guys mm -hmm. on and signed, and they should still be successful next year as well. But they're not taking that for granted. And so, you know, they're out there just making making deals left and right. And, you know, I, I, I love it. 
When you were playing for the Eagles and after growing up in East Texas, how many lifelong friends did that turn into a huge conflict within themselves where they were always going to root for you, but you were still a Philadelphia Eagle and that, that just it's hard to do that math? Oh, I mean, you sound like you probably heard, you know, some of my past interviews. Because, <laughs> I mean, folks would always say, hey, we want you to do, even my relatives. You know, in the, in the good, in the, it's good and bad, right? Because early on in my career, when I came back, when we were playing in Texas Stadium at the time, you know, I used to try to get as many tickets as possible just because I wanted other folks that I grew up with, a lot of my family, to experience that as well. But... You know, it took my grandmother probably three, probably three years, three or four years into the league when she was like, baby, I want you to stop buying all of those tickets. I was like, why? She was like, you know, some of your uncles, some of your cousins, some of your friends, they want you to do well, but they still want those doggone cowboys to win the game. I said, you know what, grandmother, say less. And it saved me a lot of money, too. So, hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, that's that that's a weird thing yeah. to do. Like, Bobby, we want you to achieve almost all of your dreams, but right. one. But you know what? Yeah. But you know what's crazy about that, right? I actually know guys, some of my peers. I'm not going to call their names. That went to college, had successful collegiate careers, got drafted, played in the league multiple years, and you know what? They've never played for the Cowboys, but in their post life or post. On a football career in retirement, they're a cowboy team. I'm like, go figure that. Like, <laughs> how does that happen? You've never even played for for the Cowboys, <laughs> and you know, in retirement, you're a cowboy fan. Like, I, I don't, I don't see how that adds up. Bobby, what were your thoughts when you saw Demar Hamlin and that story, and and obviously off the field, the Peyton Hillis story, which was frightening as well, when he saved his own children, and, and, and almost because of it, lost his life as just a proud alum of the National Football League. Yeah, so, you know, we have a lot of programs that we have in place for former players, and, you know, one of those things are as far as getting help when you need to talk to someone, right? And so seeing that play out on live television, I mean, I was speechless. I mean, luckily, I was by myself. My kids weren't beside me, so I didn't have to explain that to them at the time just because I was trying to take it all in and process it myself. So, I mean, that was tough. And then when you think about Peyton Hillis' situation where, you know, I have three boys, and, you know, I would do anything to, you know, let them continue their lives and essentially sacrifice yourself. And so that was something that, you know, he did. I'm, I'm lucky that, I mean, he's lucky. And we're all lucky when you think about the, the alumni community that he's doing better and DeMar is doing better as well. But, you know, those were just some of those, I, I would say, I guess, rare instances as far as things that happen um, on live television that you just wish wouldn't have happened. But, you know, by the grace of God, both of those men are doing well right now. Bobby, what, when you played the game, was there ever a snap when you didn't think you were going to either deflect a ball, knock a ball down, or pick it off? Oh, no, I wouldn't say so. Just because, you know, you put the work in, um, not just on the practice field, but in the classroom as well as far as studying, trying to make sure that you knew the game plan each week. And, you know, I just had confidence in myself and, you know, with the talent, with the work ethic and studying as well, I always felt like if the ball was up in the air, I had a better chance or, or just as strong a chance to be able to um, get it as opposed to the receiver on offense. Bobby Taylor, Eagles, Seahawks, Notre Dame, Lobos. <laughs> Longview Lobos, uh, baby. Longview Lobos. Lobos. How, <laughs> how many times in your career in Philly – and I'm sure there were times where they gave it to you guys as well because that's, those fans are um, – they have high, <laughs> high standards uh, for what they want. Uh, they don't put up with any mess. But how many times did you – something happened, you go, man, I'm really glad those are our fans and I'm not playing for these other guys right now. Oh, so many times. So <laughs> many times. Listen, it's funny you mention it. I was talking to a gentleman earlier that said he was from Philly and he lives down here in Arizona now. And I was like, listen – 
these boys better get off to an early start or fast start on Sunday because if there's a certain amount of Eagles fans in the stadium in the Super Bowl, they may they may lose. But hopefully that doesn't happen. I'm not trying to wish that on the guys. I really feel like um, you know they've had a great season and a great playoff. They put themselves in a great position to go out and be world champions. Bobby, the uh, appreciate your time, man. Was there ever a sport that you didn't master that you wanted to? You know what? I think from a from a, from a sport and athletic standpoint, I think if there was something that I I wouldn't necessarily say I didn't master it, but I regret just slightly that when I was in college, I didn't also play basketball. Yeah. Just because I knew I had the talent. But, you know, unfortunately, having a long season as a freshman, going to the Cotton Bowl, beating up on Texas A&M, and, um, you know, I was just – my body was just beat up. You know, as a freshman, unfortunately, I was able to get a lot of playing time and start at, like, the second half of the season. But that was that, that's probably the biggest thing that I wish if I could have back. That's why I talked to – so many kids just these days where you see them specialize. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why would you specialize? Especially you, you, you just in junior high, or you just in sometimes elementary. I'm like, look, play every sport that you can, just because all of those skills are transferable. I started off as a safety when I went to Notre Dame. I played and started in my freshman year, but in, in spring ball, out of the blue, Coach Hope came to me and said, "Hey, Bobby, um, we're having some issues at corner. We just want to try you at corner at." in the scrimmage. And so I played corner in the scrimmage. And that was the last time I ever played safety in my life. So imagine yeah. I played corner as a sophomore on varsity in Longview. Then I played safety my career, safety my um, senior year, number one safety in the country, go to Notre Dame as a safety and play. And so that's kind of like my football testimony, especially when I talk to these kids because I'm like, you know what, just be ready. You never know what positions you're going to be in and playing multiple sports, you know, I think puts you in a better position to be able to do and, and get some of those transferable skills. What, you, yeah, go what's ahead. Lou Holtz like when he's mad? Man, you got to make sure you're at least probably five or, or ten feet away from him <laughs> because he's probably spitting everywhere. <laughs> and, you know, at the time, he used to smoke a pipe and all of those types of things. But, yeah, he, he was definitely tough. Um you know, something I know that I felt like I, I, I embraced it totally. The majority of the guys on our team embraced it. But, I mean, he, he taught us so much, um, you know, just about some of the rivalries that we played against the teams. And it just made you appreciate, like, okay, being in this position is something that you guys should never take for granted. Um, because when it's over, you know, if you don't, you know, use all of the resources and all of the time, that you have, you're going to be looking back on it like, dang, I wish I would have did this. I wish I would have did that. But, yeah, Coach Holtz is great. Wow, that, that that's a great story. You hear about kids today. You were at one time in your life, kids today. I was back, and I'm older. When you are discussing life and consulting with these young kids today, are they listening to you the way you want them to? I hope so. Only thing I can do is when those opportunities present themselves, just try to pour myself into them. Um, I would hope just from my resume, the experiences, some of the things that I've been able to do. If it, if I was a, a, a younger guy and someone like myself with the resume, you know, wanted to take the time out to talk to me, I would do any and everything I could to try to soak that up. And so that's all you can do. I mean, even if I'm if I'm speaking to 25 kids and only one of them is listening and one of them bring, takes something from that, uh-huh. I, I don't feel bad about that. I feel like at least I was able to, you know, get across to one of these young men. But I think for the most part, you know, there's some pretty bright, there's some pretty um, good young men that are in the league today. I know that the NFL is in a great place, especially with all of these great quarterbacks that we have. Uh, you know, we got two Texas boys playing in the Super Bowl. And so, uh, you know, I, it's, it's a great thing right now. Bobby, thank you. I know you got a busy day, busy schedule. A lot of people want to have a chance to visit with you. You're 
a lifelong great one. I appreciate you, uh, all of what you do to give back uh, with what you've been able to experience in your life, and we appreciate your time today. Yeah, appreciate you too. But I, I can remember <laughs> you did my the first ever feature that I ever had. It was the first feature that any person did, and so I feel like we're family. Keep doing what you're doing. I know you've been doing it for the longest. I mean, I like I like listening to you. you bring a lot to the game, and so you know, you guys have a great week. And if I'm able to get over there to see you in person, it would be good to see you as well. Yes, sir. If you get over here, let me know, and we'll be here. Bobby Taylor, the great Bobby Taylor in so many different ways. He was the best overall high school athlete across the board in the 42 years I've covered the sports, high school football, basketball, track. He did it all. Won a state championship in basketball. Like you said, he, Digger Phelps had left, I think,